First up, he is a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution and author of the book of Boys and Men, Why the Modern Male is Struggling, Why It Matters, and What to Do About It, Richard Reeves. <laughs> Richard? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like... You look like a model of the modern male. Thank you, you too. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, I, the first thing I want to ask you about this book, uh, I, reading about it and then about it, the book itself, and then about it, is that just broaching this subject, which is really non-controversial in the sense that it is really happening. Mm -hmm. The modern male really is in trouble. We have statistics and data. But just covering this is somehow uh, dangerous for the author. Could you explain that? Yeah, that was the fear. That was what people said to me before writing it, is if you, if you just write about boys and men, people will assume that you're Josh Hawley, effectively, <laughs> that you're just part of the manosphere, right. you're on the alt-right. And the more people said that, the more I thought, I really do need to write this book, because uh -huh. I think it's an axiom of political life and cultural life that if responsible people don't address real problems in a straightforward way, irresponsible people are going to exploit them. Yeah. And I think that's just a, a, a lesson of history. Right. And so I, I lead with the facts, let's get to some solutions, and also let's, let's, let's do ourselves the, uh, the favour of assuming we can think two thoughts at once. That we can think there are problems for boys and men, especially working class boys and men, and black boys and men, there are still many issues still facing women and girls. And guess what? We can hold both those thoughts in our right. head at the same time. Of course. But I must say, just anecdotally, as someone who, you know, never been married, never have children, but the you know, I certainly know most of my friends did that, mm -hmm. and, and their kids are, have grown up, and I've seen that. And I've heard over the years, especially when they got a little older, a lot of times I hear, you know, I worry about my boy. Mm -hmm. The girl's doing fine, mm -hmm. but the boy, I can't get him off Pornhub, and the grades are bad, and I've heard that a lot. Yeah. What changed? What I mean, it, w when I went to college, it was, huh, unfortunately, almost all men. Mm -hmm. Certainly where I went. Right. Where did you go? Cornell. Okay. It sucked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah, and, uh, you know, <laughs> now it's flipped. Now yeah, the right. colleges are majority women. Yeah. In fact, 50 years ago, there was... There was a gender gap of about 13 points in favor of men. Now there's a gap of 15 points in favor of women. So there's more gender inequality on college campuses today than there was in 1972. It's just flipped. It's the, it's the other well, way around. What's That's the just... short answer for why this happened? I think the education system actually suits girls and women better than boys and men on average. And we didn't know that because previously we weren't encouraging girls and women to go on to college. So under conditions of sexism, Actually, their natural advantages in the classroom didn't really show up. But since we've taken the lid off women's educational opportunities and aspirations, they've just blown right past the boys in high school, in college, etc. And so it, turn, it, you know, it, it turns out that a level playing field exposes who are the better players. And in our current education system that rewards sitting still, turning your homework in, paying attention, looking to the future, et cetera. Those are all skills I, that, on average, girls just have in greater abundance than boys. That's a, that's a, I, a fact. I, that I'm, sure, I'm sure it is, but I must also say, I've heard this forever now, not forever, but for many years, that your boys are at a disadvantage because they have a harder time sitting still. I'm sure I did too. Mm -hmm. But when I went to school, they didn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. It's like, sit still, mm -hmm. and we did. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a boy, so what? Yes, you're a little more antsy. Yeah. But you still can be told to pay attention and told to study and do all the things we were told to do. Isn't it more that parents are just too indulgent? No, I, I, um... I, I, it may well be that that's true in the classroom. I have to tell you, my experience is similar to yours, is that most of the parents I know are not really indulging their boys, they're worrying like hell about their boys and trying to help them out in various ways. And increasingly, I think parents are coming to realise that the current way that classrooms are run and the current structure of education just isn't suiting our boys very well. So currently, almost one in four boys in, in the US have been diagnosed with a developmental disability. Almost one in four. I suggest that might be less about the boys and more about the system <laughs> that we're trying to force them through, which it turns out doesn't suit all of them very well. And so rather than blaming boys, I think we should be reforming the education system so that it's as male-friendly as it is female-friendly. Well, how do you do that? Well, I mean, how? well, 
One thing, one thing we could do is reverse uh, the tide, which has seen uh, male teachers basically leaving the classroom. So we, it's only 24% of K-12 teachers now are men. It was, down, it was 33% in the 1980s. Almost no early years educators are men. And so the teaching profession has become steadily more and more female. We've also retreated almost entirely from vocational education, technical high schools, apprenticeships, etc., which, on average, suit boys and men better. Uh, but we've retreated from all of that, and so let's bring some of those back. Technical high schools, more male teachers, more recess. And by the way, wow. if it's true that boys find it hard to sit still, sure, you could tell them to sit still, but it might also be a good, good idea every now and again to run them around. Let's have more phys ed, more extracurricular activity and so on. Okay. Rather than saying there's something wrong with them. Right. No, there's, I agree, but right? at some point you just have to sit still and pay attention. And by the way, sure. for me, maybe we should have more male teachers. Yeah. But when I was in sixth grade, the only reason I paid attention was Mrs. Hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, and, I don't and, know her, and I'm afraid well, of her. Well, if you so. saw those sweaters she wore, okay. you would understand. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> She sounds pretty scary. No, she was not scary. No, no she was sexy. Oh, I'm That's sorry. What I'm, I'm sorry. Mrs. Hill was not scary. Which, which grade was this? This is sixth grade. Okay. You know, the beginning of Bonerville. Mm -hmm. well, it comes at different ages for different boys. That's right. Not an area of expertise for me, but sixth grade is quite early, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here for you. Coming from an expert like you, <laughs> I, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm blushing. I, well.